Continuing from the last lecture then, let's go ahead and create our own custom animation delay plugin. So if we go back to our code, within our plugins directory, let's go ahead and create a new file and we're gonna call it animationdelay.js. And just like with the open variant, we want to import the plugin function from Tailwind CSS slash plugin. So in animation delay then, let's go ahead and create a const plugin and set this equal to require Tailwind CSS slash plugin. Then let's go ahead and create that animation delay plugin then. Let's go const animation delay and set this equal to plugin and pass a function as a callback function to the plugin. And this plugin is going to be different in the way we create it because we're going to make sure that this is a dynamic class, which means if we go back to our index.html, ideally what we want to do is specify an animation delay and we can create some default class names for this. So for example, just like what we've done for things like margin, top, two, and all the already specified and out of the box values with Tailwind, we can also add a specific value with the square brackets. So ideally we wanna do exactly the same with the animation delay. So what we wanna do is be able to use something like animation delay and then 100 for 100 milliseconds, 200 for 200 milliseconds, etc., etc. but then also allow dynamic values. So for example, open up some square brackets and add 150 milliseconds. So this is also possible with Tailwind CSS plugins and specifically it's possible if we go back to our animation delay, it's possible to create this with the match utilities helper. So let's go ahead and destructure the match utilities from the callback to plugin. And let's go ahead and use this match utilities then. And the match utilities will take an object. And what we want to do is specify the base class name that we want to use for this particular utility class. So here we want to specify animation dash delay. And this is going to be a function so we wanna set this to a function because it can take a dynamic value. So the dynamic value will be passed to the function anytime we call our animation delay like this with the square brackets and passing in a specific value. So that value will be accessible from this function. And then what we want to do is just return an object with a CSS class. So we want to return an animation delay. And for this, we need to use camel case. So Tailwind expects that we're gonna use camel case for the CSS properties when we return it from the match utilities. So we just wanna set that equal to the value that we pass whenever we specify it in the square brackets here. So this will set up our animation delay as a dynamic utility where we can specify it in square brackets. But we also want to make sure that we provide some defaults as part of this plugin. Now, we're not actually gonna use all of these defaults, but I just wanna show you how to add these defaults for these utility classes. So this is a dynamic utility class. And now let's go ahead and add some default classes for our animation delay. So for this, we need to destructure theme as well from our callback function. And as the second argument to the plugin function, we can override or extend the Tailwind CSS theme. So we can add a theme property here and add an animation delay property. And then within this animation delay, this is where we can specify all of our default utility classes for our animation delay. So I'm just gonna add 100 to 900 here. And as we increment, we're just going to specify that animation delay 100 will be 100 milliseconds, animation delay 200 will be 200 milliseconds, etc., etc. So instead of you watching me typing all this out now, I'm just gonna quickly add it all in and then return to the video. So there we go. I've added all my default classes in and I've actually added uh, 1000 as well for 1000 milliseconds. So again, we're not gonna use all of these default classes, but I just wanna show you how to add these default classes in whenever we're creating these dynamic utility classes. So the last thing we need to do now then is register these default values as part of our animation delay utility class. So we can specify as well as a second argument to the match utilities. We can specify default values to register for this animation delay class. So we can specify values here and we can go ahead and grab all of these animation delay values that we've just created by using the theme function and referencing the animation delay values. So this theme function here with the animation delay string here is referencing these animation delay values that we've just created. And it's gonna add it to our utility function 
and create all of those animation delay classes as well as allow us to create dynamic values via those square brackets. So let's go ahead then and finish off this plugin. We want to go module.exports and set that equal to animation delay. So let's save this now then and we want to reference our new animation delay plugin in our tailwind config.js. So in the plugins then, let's go ahead and require dot slash plugins slash animation delay. And then if we take a look in our index.html then, let's remove this animation delay here. Let's save this and let's start typing then animation delay. And we can already see it down here. These are, are now our new animation delay classes. So we've got 100 to 1000, but we can also specify if we wanted to an animation dash delay dash and then any value that we want in here. So let's, for example, go 150 milliseconds. Let's hover over this class. And now we can see that this animation delay class is going to generate the animation delay of 150 milliseconds in our CSS. So we don't actually want an animation delay for that first bar, but let's go ahead and add it for the second bar. So let's go animation delay 200 for the second bar. Let's go ahead and add an animation delay of 150 milliseconds for the third bar. We can add an animation delay of 300 for the fourth bar. And for the fifth bar, let's just go ahead and add another dynamic one. So let's go animation delay and specify 75 milliseconds. So let's save this now and take a look in the browser. Let's give it a refresh. And there we go. We can see our bars are now staggered when they start their animations. So it looks a little bit more like a waveform. So now that we've concluded our hero section in the next section and the next lecture, we're going to take a look at adding our main body content and creating our headliners slideshow, as well as our toggle for our light and dark mode. So we'll start taking a look at this in the next lecture.